What up, Pooh That Nation? This is No Cap, No Filter Saints. I'm your host, Molly G. Back at y'all to the episode. Uh, right now, man, Saints is 2 and 5. They lost 5 in a row, 7 weeks in. They got a mini bye week, man. Up until they go to Los Angeles and go play the Los Angeles Chargers. Chargers, they got a good defense, man. They got Bosa, they got Khalil Mack, they got some other guys uh, in the secondary, they have a few good linebackers, but for the most part, most people know Bosa and Khalil Mack, the average fan. I'm not sure if uh, Derwin James is going to play this game. He's a very good safety. Um, they have a good head coach, you know, Harbaugh. Hard nosed, tough head coach. He want to establish the run. He want to play good defense. Justin Herbert, he's a very good quarterback. Kind of mobile. He's mobile enough. About on the same mo mobility as Joe Joe, Joe uh, Burrow. Y'all remember when Joe Burrow he was making plays with his legs versus the Saints. Um. Maybe a little bit slower than Joe Burrow, but he can still make plays with his legs and his arm nonetheless. And the thing is, they don't really have too much good wide receiver options. But no good wide receivers do things against us pretty good. Like, that's the only thing that Dennis Allen can say. He can stop the receivers. And, and, and that's a little shaky because we seen what Godwin did. We seen what Juju did. You know, C.D. Lamb, he had that one big play. Devontae Smith, he was having a little bit of success. So, even that's a little bit shaky. But, for the most part, you feel good about the Saints, you know, going up against, you know, raw receivers that's just not elite. And they don't have any raw receivers that's elite over there. But what they do have that's borderline elite, or is elite this season, is J.K. Dobbins, and he's a very good running back. They put the uh, stock and investment in their offensive line, and they went ahead, and got some good old linemen, bro. They uh, got J.K. Dobbins looking like a star, and he was always a good running back when he played for the Ravens. He just could never stay healthy, you know. And versus us, he's gonna be, you know, somebody that's I think that's gonna have a big day, especially if they keep up the way they play in defense. Did they give up on Dennis Allen completely? I don't know if they just gave up on him, but I can and I can honestly say the energy is not there. The energy is not there. The effort is not there. They got players blocking Chase Young like your boy on Twitter, uh, Mr. Super Chin. Mr. Super Chin. <laughs> you know, if you're on Twitter, you probably know what I'm talking about. But, uh, yeah, man. Saints right now, I can honestly say... They legitimately injured, but they're going to get some guys back for this Chargers game, I believe. Because like I said, we got a mini bye week. You might be getting Lucas Patrick back. You for sure going to get Olave back. You might be getting Taysom Hill back. Hell, you might get Derek Carr back. But that's if they decide if they want to go and play Jake Hanna to see what he got. A lot of people feel like Jake Hanna should have won the battle and be, been a quarterback too. And some people feel like, shoot, see what Snake got. She was snake guy when, when it comes to getting some of these offensive play, people back. You might get Ruiz back. They want to see how Snake do with Ruiz or, or Olave. Because remember, when we played the Bucks, Olave got injured on like the first drive. So we didn't really get a chance to see him with Olave. So you, you, Olave went out at the beginning of the Bucks game and then he was out the whole uh, Broncos game. So was, when you're judging Snake, Compared to Jake, just remember, Jake might be having the whole four or nine days of prep on top of that offensive uh, key guys coming back at his disposal and for his protection all on the offensive line, wide receiver, and Taysom Hill. So we got to remember that. Um, I can honestly say the bus game, you know, that was a legit injured team. I can honestly say the Broncos game, that was a legit injured team. But this Chargers game, you're going to be getting some guys back. So, 
depending on who come back, the Chargers game is going to be your last game for you going to say you was injured. So to me, out of a 17-week season, let's just say you injured three games. You still got 14 other games to go prove yourself. Mind you, the defense is relatively healthy. The only two guys we losing for the whole season is Adebo and Rasheed. Other than that, everybody's coming back. Derek Carr is coming back. McCoy is coming back. Taysom Hill is coming back. Ruiz is coming back. A lot of these starters is coming back. Olave, he only missed what? He fully missed one game, and he started the bus game and got injured at the beginning. So the injury excuse going to only work for so long. If you would have won the Chiefs game, the Eagles game, the Atlanta game, you would have had room forever. At first, I wouldn't count the Chiefs game. But I'm going to count the Chiefs game because they had injuries themselves. And you had a full Derrick Carr. You, you had a relatively in, uh, healthy team. If Taysom Hill and McCoy is the linchpin of your offense and you just break down because it's just two guys uh, amongst the whole team, then that lets you know you just wasn't a good team to begin with. You're top heavy. You ain't got no depth. Other teams out there, they have depth. We played the uh, Broncos, and they didn't have their starting center. We played the uh, Bucks, they didn't have their starting center, I don't think. We played the Falcons, they didn't have their starting center. No team has a Taysom Hill. We the only team that had that luxury. So it's only a matter of time before the injuries become an excuse. You know it's different when you got Jeff Duncan talking greasy. Even Jeff Duncan was tired of the bull. He even said, man, I don't want to hear no injuries excuse. I seen Trevor Simeon go be a, 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 a Bucks team that was damn good. Mind you, Jameis Winston got injured that game, and we still won. Now, the, the, the key to every season is success, and then after success, you got to make sure it's, it's a sustainable. Can Trevor Simeon go out there and sustain winning? Probably not, but you can hope that you could, you could, you could steal a game or two. And that's what good teams will do. They'll steal a game or two, even with injuries. Because they're well coached. You know? But if you were to beat these teams, the Chiefs, the Eagles, the, 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 the Falcons, you would have had room for error and rip wiggle room. Let's just say you would have went two and one out those games. Well, right now, out of these seven weeks, you would have been four and three. You would have been afloat. You would have had a winning record, and you would have lost to what? The, let's just say you would have lost to the Chiefs and lost to the to the Broncos. That's losing to these AFC teams. They don't really count as much. And let's just say, yeah, you lost to the Bucks. But okay, you, if you would have beat the Falcons and beat the Eagles, that's the NFC team. That matter more. You had to recall them games. You had to recall against the Chiefs. You had to recall against the Eagles. You had to recall against the Falcons. You had all them weapons, too. Yeah, you didn't have McCoy, but shit. If one guy go down and that make a break your, your, your season, that's still a fit of your season. That, that, that says a lot. That says that you ain't do good when it comes to getting depth in the offseason. The whole offseason, we bang the table, go get offensive linemen, go get a receiver. Now what happened? Offensive linemen are getting injured, which is one of the most probable units that's going to get sustained to injury. Raw receivers, you're missing Shahid for the whole year now. Been saying go get a wide receiver. Even with Shahid and Olave, some people wouldn't sort out Olave being the wide receiver one. A lot of people thinking of the cornerstones of this team, and a lot of people don't even have Olave in that number. Because a lot of people feel like he's not a wide receiver one. He's like a Devontae Smith. Yeah, he could do good, but he'll do even better when he got an A.J. Brown on the other side. We need an A.J. Brown. And the Shahid is not the A.J. Brown. got Albert Kamara he's been on Twitter today it's been some type of uh 
rumor been put out there that he requested a trade. He came shut that down. He even got Michael Thomas involved. And Michael Thomas had replied with who that basically saying, yeah, if, if anything get happen, y'all go ahead and come out from my mouth. Right on the couch. And if it don't come from my mouth, I'll have Michael Thomas say it. And Michael Thomas had replied and saying who that. And apparently it's been a fake workout uh, post that's going out for the Saints. And a lot of people actually started showing up. <laughs> Scott Shelley said shit. He'll like to see it happen. He wants to see them do the drills. Like people was showing up. Even Willie Gay had to go on Twitter and say, yeah, man, that, that post was fake. And a lot of people thought it was real because we sustained a lot of injuries. But just think of all the 25 year olds, 26 year olds who probably was trying to get their agent to, you know, let them know, yeah, they about to go try out for the Saints. Having their mama all excited, said they about to go try out for the Saints. And they're probably, they probably looking at it as their last big break, their last big chance. They still got one more one chance left to get in the uh, league and fulfill their dreams. Michael Ben Man Lewis did it. He, he walked on as a tryout for the Saints and he became a good damn re return specialist. But come to find out that was fake. Now what I want to know is what defensive player because like I said it, it was another thing that went around on Saints Twitter. See a lot of y'all don't be familiar with Saints Twitter. Y'all ain't got Twitter. A lot of people y'all just don't have Twitter or a lot of y'all just feel like y'all too old for Twitter. And there ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. But a woman had posted on her Twitter that uh, her Uber driver, she got into an Uber in New Orleans, and her Uber driver had told her he picked up a New Orleans Saints player. It was a defensive Saints player. She wasn't going to say the name. But the defensive player had told the Uber driver that the locker room hates DA and is in turmoil, and they want him gone. And she said she a thousand percent believed him. She believed the Uber driver that told him her that. Because these Uber drivers, they pick up a lot of people that, you know, have a name or, you know, have some type of celebrity to them, you know. Sometimes they be, they be picking up people that's famous from the airport and bringing them somewhere. Especially if they drive with, like, Uber or uh, the luxury. So, you... you you might pick up a Saints player that's on the practice squad. You might pick up a Saints player that's on a depth chart but not just starting. But he's still in that locker room. He can still tell you what's going on. They told you before. They told you last year. It was a... It was a... a it was like a survey going around the league with the locker room. And they was talking about who are the best to worst ranked head coaches. And Dennis Allen, all the head coaches that was not fired and still survived, Dennis Allen ranked dead last. And this came from the locker room. Like, y'all gonna just stop taking what these players say at face value. Of course they're gonna get in front of the cameras and say the politically, politically correct thing. Of course, Cam Jordan, Tyron Matthew, Demario Davis. Of course, these guys, you know, they're going to be the yes men for the company. They're going to be the company guys for the company. They're going to tell you, oh, yeah, man, we, we don't want Dennis Allen going. Uh, they're going to they, they gonna give you all that lip service. That's what they're supposed to do. That's how they carry themselves as a true professional. Everybody can't be a Michael Thomas. You see where it got Michael Thomas. I love Michael Thomas. They try to make him look like Jaguar White or Orlando Brown. But everything he said was true. Dennis Allen is a loser. Derek Carr is a loser. The training staff is bad. The medical staff is bad. Strength and conditioning staff is bad. You know? All that stuff. We seen how it's playing out. Even though I got my tip for you head and I feel like some of these guys could play, but they just, you know, don't want to risk further long injury. And on top of that, I just feel like, you know, it, it gives like a built-in excuse for Dennis Allen. But come this Chargers game, you're going to only have three games to say, oh, yeah, man, you were injured, legitimately injured, like just ravaged with injuries. But on top of that, you still got to remember the defense was relatively healthy and they out there whipping on tackles. And from what we hear about this Uber Uber thing, you got you can't forget that either. You can't forget Amy Trash when she was telling us about Dennis Allen way in advance. First team meeting, the, 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 
the locker room just left out there speechless. Staff left out there speechless because Dennis Allen just had a horrible first team meeting on this conference. Players in and out her door. Coming for just bad uh, issues with Dennis Allen. Nine stop. This is a revolving door of players. You don't shake bad habits like that. And if they bring Dennis back, Allen back for a fourth season, the last thing I want to hear is, oh, he's doing things his way. He's learning. Accountability will be enforced. We heard that three seasons already. Stop treating this dude like a first-time head coach. Take account and what he did do at the Raiders. That counts. I don't care what they say. And like I say, man, it, it's easier said than done to hurt, hit them with their pockets. Now, it did happen for that Detroit Lions game. But you got to see it happen several times. You know, if y'all want to do a real boycott. But other than that, for the most part, a lot of these old fans who got season tickets, it's like a tradition for them to go to the Saints game. These these fans are 68, 67 years old. It, it, they're just the type of fans that's going to go to the game, go watch the Saints play, and they want to see them win. It's the, oh, bless you, boys. You know, they, they, they're the type of fans, they don't care if the team only won three games. Well, if they win that fourth game late in the season, they're going to be in that dome cheering and happy that they won their fourth game. They don't even follow what's going on on all these Saints podcasts and keeping up with all the storylines and narratives and just everything that's going on underneath the team at, 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 at face surface value. They ain't following these podcasts and Saints Twitter and knowing all of the new the nuances that's going on and all that. They ain't, all they doing, all they know is come Sunday, they going to the game because it's more like a tradition for them. They don't even know fully like what's going on with Dennis Allen. They don't even, they can care less any either. Like they, they, they just know if, they, if it's black and gold, they want the black and gold to win. That's all they care about. And they got young fans who so young, they probably so young, they, they ain't even get a chance to really witness and enjoy the Super Bowl. They probably watched it, but they ain't even get a chance to fully understand what's going on. All they know is Drew Brees and uh, Sean Payton. All they just seen was good offensive play, even through the 79 years. Then when 2017 happened, things really started getting popping back again. So all they know was good, fun, success. So with this Dennis Allen and call era, they like, okay, well, we could just push through. We could just push through. But for the fans who are in their 30s and 40s, we're a little bit too old for that and we're a little bit too young for that. So fuck all that. We won't change. We know what it takes. And they got some who just going to ride and die with the black and gold no matter what. They don't care what product they put out there. I had a dude tell me, I'm rocking with whatever the Saints do. So that means if they fired Dennis Allen and get an even worse head coach, and let's just say they move on from Derek Carr and they go with J J Jake Hanna, you're going to rock with whatever the Saints do. And let's just say it be bad. It don't matter. You're rocking with whatever the Saints do. Well, nah, not me. I'm going to let my voice be heard. And they got other people who are going to let their voice be heard and let them know that they dissatisfied with the product. A lot of fans, they act like their allegiance to the team is not calling the team out and criticizing the team. You're a fake fan if you criticize the team. You're a fake fan if you want Dennis Allen fired. Because if you want Dennis, Dennis Allen fired, evidently, you want a bad season. You rooting for the team, no matter what they put out there, don't make you no more of a bigger fan than the next man. You going to the game while they're doing bad, don't make you no more of a bigger fan than the next man. I can root for the team the way I feel and how I go about it. I can support the team watching on the TV. I, I, I ain't got to go to the, day, the game to support them. You know? And they trying to police fanhood. But I just wanted to make this a little quick video, man. Get some stuff off my chest. It's a lot that's going around. Really just trying to see who's going to be the starting quarterback for this Chargers game. This Broncos game, Derek Cole actually wasn't out. He was doubtful. So don't be surprised if Derek Cole make a comeback. But 
from what I'm hearing that, you know, when he tries to get out there and tries to go practice, he's not comfortable. You know, like he's not comfortable with his strokes. Like Drew Brees had the same injury, but Drew Brees, uh, he was able to come back after like a week, I believe. Uh, I think Anthony Richardson, I think he just had the same injury. I think he's coming back after like a week or two, I believe. But everybody's body is different. So, and Derek Carr, he played through a lot of injuries throughout his career. Like, what if this the season where it's starting to catch up to him? Like, everybody ain't going to be, you know, uh, Iron Man their whole career. Like, everybody can be a Cam Jordan and a DeMario Davis. That's 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 an, a very big exception to the rule. But as far as Dennis Allen, man, if this don't, if, if 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 it don't work out with the next head coach, then you try again. Like I'm not about to just stick with one thing and don't work and keep trying. That's like the definition of insanity. You ain't getting you you getting the same results. You changing out all these different things, but you're not changing the one thing. That's the the common denominator. You know. So, with that being said, we're just going to have to find out to see who's who going to uh, step up to the plate. And I feel so sorry for Debo, man. The contract year, he got that type of injury. Messed up his chances of having his family set up, you know, for years to come with financial security. And that be the reason why a lot of players have uh, business decisions for that reason right there. But till next time, you know, y'all catch me uh who that nation. I make some more content. We're gonna get into this Chargers game. We're gonna look at the matchups in a more deep uh depth dive look uh later on this week. Um Yeah man, just stay uh stay tuned for more uh video from your boy man. But until then, like our uh, Saints legend, future Hall of Fame head coach Dennis Allen C, y'all keep doing what you're doing. Who that?